بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Brothers and sisters in Islam الحمد لله بالتوفيق of Allah سبحانه وتعالى We have started a lecture series which talks about character correction It's important for us to develop good character as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in regards to character Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said about him وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And surely you are upon the best of conduct. We should try to shape our lives around that of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his male and female companions and make sure that we try to develop our character especially during this month of Ramadan. Inshallah, today we'll be talking about the kinds of greed and what greed means and how we can, inshallah, rid ourselves of that greed. Before I get started in talking about that, in the last lecture, lecture number three, which was last Saturday, I mentioned that I would talk about some cures for jealousy and my teacher Mufti Muhammad Taqi Uthmani Damat Barakatuh he wrote a book on character correction and in that he mentions some ways to cure it so number one he said if you would like to cure jealousy then the most important thing is to understand the harm of jealousy and the harm that it causes. This is natural that any type of disease or any type of bad thing that we should be staying away from, which causes harm to us, that we acknowledge the harm. Not only acknowledge it, but also take all means possible to avoid it and to stay away from it. Because it does both physical harm, mental harm, and spiritual harm. So just like all other sicknesses, jealousy is something that it's obviously going to harm us and it can give harm to both one's dunya and deen. And so we talked about that last time, but this is one of the things my teacher told us to really pay attention to, is to Make sure that we focus on understanding the harms that jealousy can do so we will avoid it. The second thing he said is, man is not responsible to eliminate base natural character uh, because that is not in his power. And so whatever is in his power, he should do that. And that's where he comes to number three, saying that he is responsible to check all of those sicknesses, keep them in check, in other words, or, and also keep all types of uh, base natural characters in check. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So, first of all, we should understand that man is not responsible for uh, to eliminate them altogether whatever is naturally inside of us, like anger, like sexual desire, uh, like all different types of natural characteristics, they should be kept in check. We don't eliminate them totally, but we keep them, keep them in check. And we are responsible to use them re in a good way, in a responsible and reasonable way, and to not use them in an irresponsible way, in an unreasonable way. So, for example, you know, anger is a natural characteristic which can cause problems if we don't keep them in check. It must be kept in check and not used irresponsibly and unreasonably. Anger over a person harming one's family is good, for example. It's commendable. It's justified. So if it were not for anger, what would happen would be the result of 
death for himself and his family. And therefore, anger in this aspect is something which is good, it's commendable, and justified. Likewise, another example is, you know, the sexual desire inside of man. You know, so this too must be, this is a, first of all, it's a natural characteristic inside human beings, but it has to be kept in check, and we must use it reasonably and responsibly, not unreasonably, and not irresponsibly. So therefore, you know, if it were not for this desire in us, then we would not ha be able to have children and have a family and spread that progeny throughout the world. And so, on the other hand, if we don't keep it in check, then we will use it in unlawful places outside of marriage. And so that can be something which is very extremely dangerous. And so I just wanted to mention that before I get started in today's lecture, which is on the kinds of greed. What is greed? In Arabic, the lexical definition of greed is to have a strong inclination in the heart for something and a person yearns for it. In Arabic, when one's inclination succeeds or exceeds his desires, the word tama is usually used for one's greed, right? It can have a good connotation, which I'll talk about also and you'll see today, but likewise, can have a bad connotation. So when one's tama is exceeding his hawa, his desires, that be the tama becomes taba, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says, you know, in the Quran that we put a stamp, taba Allahu ala qulubihim, you know, Allah put a stamp on their hearts, you know, and so we don't want it to exceed desires, where then our hearts become misguided. So this inner state, when it wants to keep and withhold everything for itself and does not want to share it with anyone else, this is called in Arabic tama, in a, in a higher degree it's called shuh. But when it's in a person to such an extent where it starts to become manifested outwardly as well, that's called bukhul, stinginess. And so Allah tells us to avoid shuh, bukhul. And tama it has two different connotations. One is a good connotation, which we should strive for, and another is not so good, and we should stay away from that. And so we'll talk about those kinds of greed. But specifically here, when it comes to tama or shuh, it, it's it's a yearning, and this is the bad connotation of tama. It's a yearning for something with great desire. Again, however, like I said, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, when He mentions tama in the Quran, for example, tatajafa junubhum an al madai ila al madaji yadhoon rabbhum khawfum wa tama wa min ma razaknahum yunfiqun tatajafa junubhum an al madaji. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He says uh, in the Quran and Surah Sajda that they distance themselves or their sides from their beddings. Doing what? Calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to their Lord, Yad'una Rabbahum Khawfan wa Tama'a. See the word Tama'a is used here. In fear and expectation. And they spend from that which we have bestowed upon them of provisions. So here, Tama is a good thing, you know, and that's the expectation to get reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then there's the obvious greed, which is not for the hereafter and not for good things. Rather, it's for dunya. Uh, and there's a, a very fine line between how much wealth and position and power and status and all of these things a person can have. Right, uh, but most of the time, people they exceed those limits, and then that becomes greed, and so greed can be in one's wealth and power, position, authority, status, 
And so basically it boils down to hubbud dunya, having love for the dunya. And then love for the dunya has basically two causes. It can also branch off, which are hubbul uh, mal, you know, that's more defined. You know, obviously the dunya has mal in it, you know, uh, which is wealth. So to have a excessive love for wealth, and then also an excessive love for position, hubbul jah. When it comes to Quranic verses, I'm going to read some verses and maybe you can understand this word tama a little bit more and where it's shuh, where it's bad, and where tama is good and where tama is not is uh, not so good. So, in Surah Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَلْزِمُكَ فِي الصَّدَقَاتِ فَإِنْ أُعْطُوا مِنْهَا أَرَضُوا وَإِنْ لَمْ يُعْطَوْا مِنْهَا the hypocrites, they used to criticize the Prophet ﷺ in regards to wealth and the distribution and the distribution of the spoils of war and charity, etc. So when they were given, they approved of it, obviously, and they were happy. But if they were not given, they were upset. They would start to become angry and complain and whine, etc. <clears throat> so here, this is an example of where that yearning for wealth in a wrong way, right, and causing the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also, you know, uh, psychological pain and upsetting the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well. You know, this is not good. Obviously, he would give justly and properly, and therefore questioning Allah and His Messenger in the distribution of charity, especially in the spoils of war, etc. This was a sign of hypocrisy. This is why the hypocrites they used to do that, and so this is not a good thing. It displays the excessive greed of the hypocrites and how they used to behave with the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ تَرَى أَعْيُنَهُمْ تَفِيضُ مِنَ الدَّمْعِ مِمَّا عَرَفُوا مِنَ الْحَقِّ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاكْتُبْنَا مَعَ الشَّاهِدِينَ Talking about people of the book and who are looking for the truth. You know, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent the Sahaba to the first place of migration, which was Abyssinia. The king there welcomed them and gave them refuge. And not only that, but in that time there, uh, the Muslims they also came to the king, and the king summoned them, and he they read some recited some verses to them. And when they heard those verses that were revealed to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa the Qur'an says, you will see their eyes overflowing with tears because of what they recognize of the truth. Surah Maryam was recited and they heard about Maryam as they believed in Maryam and Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And they said when they heard that kalam, they said that it's just like ours. They said, our Lord, we have believed, so write us among those who are witnesses, right? And so the Quran goes on and says, "Wa malana la nu'minu billahi wa ma jaa'ana min al-haq, wa natma'u an yudakhilana rabbuna ma al qawm al-salihin." فَأَثَابَهُمْ اللَّهُ بِمَا قَالُوا جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He says then, and those believers. Why should we not believe in Allah and what has come to us of the truth? And we aspire that our Lord will admit us to paradise with the righteous people. Here the word natma, right? So that means to aspire, that means to have hope and expectation and want and yearn for what is good. That is the akhirah, that is jannah, and that is to be with the righteous people. So 
we aspire that our Lord will admit us to paradise with the righteous people. So Allah rewarded them for what they said with the gardens of paradise beneath which rivers flow, wherein they will abide eternally, and that is the reward for the doers of good. In another dialogue in Surah Al-Araf, Araf, the heights, and there will be a dialogue when the people of Araf will see both the people of paradise and the people of the hellfire. And that dialogue is captured here beautifully in Surah Al-Araf in verses uh, 44 through 51. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَنَادَى أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ He says that, and the companions of paradise will call out to the companions of the fire. We have already found what our Lord promised us to be true. Have you found out what your Lord promised to be true? They will say yes. Then an announcer will announce among them, the curse of Allah shall be upon the wrongdoers. لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ Those الَّذِينَ يَصُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَيَبَغُونَهَا عِوَجَا وَهُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِ كَافِرُونَ Who averted people from the path of Allah and sought to make it seem deviant, deviant while they were concerning the Akhira disbelievers. وَبَيْنَهُمَا hijab. And between them there will be a screen, a partition, a barrier. وَعَلَى الْآرَافِ رِجَالٌ يَعْرِفُونَ كُلًّا بِسِيمَاهُمْ And on it, on its elevations, are men who recognize all by their mark. So they will be the people of Araf, and they will be looking at the people of Paradise and the people of the hell, Hellfire, both of them. And وَنَادَوْ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ The people of Araf, on these heights, will be calling out to the people of Paradise, أَنْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ لَمْ يَدْخُلُوهَا وَهُمْ يَطْمَعُونَ Hear the word tama. So they will say to the people of Paradise that may peace be upon you, yet they have not even entered into Paradise yet, but they will be what? Longing for it, yearning for it. And so this is the word tama, which is used, وَهُمْ يَطْمَعُونَ so this is something good. And then after that, after seeing the people of paradise, they will see, turn their faces towards the people of the hellfire. وَإِذَا صُرِفَتْ أَبْصَارُهُمْ تِلْقَاءَ أَصْحَابِ النَّارِ قَالُوا رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا مَعَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ They will say when they see the people of the fire and they turn their faces towards them, O oh Allah, don't make us among the people who are wrongdoers. وَنَادَ أَصْحَابُ الْعَرَافِ رِجَالًا يَعْرِفُونَهُمْ بِسِيمَاهُمْ قَالُوا مَا أَغْنَى عَنْكُمْ جَمْعُكُمْ وَمَا كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَكْبِرُونَ The people of Araf, on the heights when they see these people of Jahannam, and they recognize them, they'll say to them, you know, what good did your gatherings, huge gatherings of people, you know, you had your group and your gang with you, right? Those were your supporters, right? But they were all against Allah and the Messenger. They were all against you know, having concern of the Akhirah, what good are they, what good did they come to you? And you were very arrogant in doing so. So what did that avail you? Right? Because now you're in this situation. So, Allah will say then, as it says in the Quran here, are these the ones whom you, O oh people of the fire, swore that Allah would never have mercy upon them, enter into paradise, O oh people of the elevations. Or, you know, so he'll be talking to the people of Araf, or the people that they used to look down uh, as inferior to them, and not being able to have the mercy of God or Allah, you know, because they used to think that, you know, we are people well off. So that's a sign that Allah is pleased with us. <laughs> but the poor people, they have nothing. God's not going to be pleased with them. What is What mercy is going to have on these people if he's not having mercy on them in this world? Right. So this is how they used to think. So Allah will say, enter, either into those people who they used to demise and despise and think lowly of, or it could be the people of the elevations, you know, because 
Obviously, when they see this situation between the people of Jannah and Jahannam, they're going to want to yearn for Jannah. And so no fear will be there concerning you, nor will you grieve. It's talking to the people of Araf or the people of Jannah. وَنَادَى أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ أَنْ أَفِيدُوا عَلَيْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ أَوْ مِمَّا رَزَقُهُ اللَّهِ قَالُوا إِنَّ حَرَّمَهُمَا عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ The people of the hellfire will call upon the people of paradise to pour down some water upon us or something that Allah has blessed you with in, from paradise or provisions. They will say it's both of these things have been haram on people who are you know, disbelievers. We can't do that. Right? So Allah has made it haram upon them. And this is the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states about such people, about these kafirin. Why? Because they used to take their religion as a game, as a uh, pastime, as a distraction and amusement. And وَغَرَّتْهُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا And they were deluded by this worldly life. فَالْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاهُمْ كَمَا نَسُوا لِقَاءَ يَوْمِهِمْ هَذَا فَمَا كَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يَجْحَدُونَ And so today, because they forgot us, we will forget them. We will forget them just as they forgot us, for forgot the meeting of this day of theirs, and for having rejected our sign. And so this is about uh, the people of Araf and the word used here was Tama, that they will aspire and they will yearn to be with the people of paradise. Now in the hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also talks about greed and excessive love of the dunya. He says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one narration, Yushikul umam. أن تداع عليكم كما تداع الأكلة إلى قصاتها قال قائل ومن قلة نحن يومئذ قال بل أنتم يومئذ كثير ولكنكم غثاء كغثاء السيل So in this hadith the Prophet ﷺ he said that you, a people soon will summon another to attack you as people when inviting one another to share their dish or food food someone asked so basically just like people call each other for dawah and you sit down right and they eat the food so that food basically is something that is going to be consumed likewise people will try to consume us right, or, the, or the believers and so it was asked that is it because we'll be in small numbers at that time that we can't take them on? The Prophet ﷺ said, no, no, it's not the case. You'll be in great number at that time. But you will be worthless. Like the rubbish that is carried down by the torrent, by the flood. And Allah will, will take the fear of you from the, the hearts of your enemy. And... Likewise, you will you will cast uh, weakness into your hearts. Someone asked, "What was this weakness? This one that you were talking about, O Messenger of Allah?" And the Messenger of Allah, he said, two things: "Hubbu dunya wa karahiyatul maut." That is the love of the world and despising of death. And so, in this hadith we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he does not the Prophet told us about greed of the dunya and the love of the dunya is something that will make us weak greed in another hadith is also talked about and its influence over man the Prophet said إِيَّاكُمْ وَالشُّحْ فَإِنَّمَا هَلَكَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ بِالشُّحْ أمرهم بالبخل فبخلوا فبخلوا وأمرهم بالقطيعة فقطعوا وأمرهم بالفجور ففجروا. So this hadith talks about 
the Prophet ﷺ saying that abstain from avarice, abstain from greed, because the people before you, they were annihilated due to greed. It told them to become stingy, they became stingy. It told them to break off relationships with their kin, they broke off those relationships. It told them to sin, they sinned. So look at the influence that greed has. A person will go to all limits. He will become stingy, he will break all laws, whether they're man-made laws or God or divine laws. He will break off even relationships with his kin. And he will even do sin to get a piece of that gold or silver or whatever they're running after. Like the Quran mentions, Zuyan al Nasi, Hubbu Shahawat, Min al Nisa wal Banim. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that this world has been <coughs> decorated and beautified for man, uh, of its women, of its children. The heaps of gold and silver, right? And the branded horses, and the cattle, and the tillage. And that is, all of these things are the things of the world, worldly things. Wallahu indahu husnul ma'ab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the better resort. So it's important for us to stay away from greed because it has a very bad influence over man. So we know that in human nature to crave for wealth is a natural instinct. And just like we just talked about those things of the world and this craving when it's used in the right place it's not such a bad thing a man must have that much craving for wealth that is necessary for him to support himself his wife and his children and to give them their rights <coughs> so make sure that <coughs> the rights of Allah are fulfilled this is why you should be paying your zakat. You should be paying your charities to the poor. You should be supporting your religious institutions. You should be supporting those people who are uh, teaching religion and uh, you know supporting and, and, and preaching the deen. These are all places that we must be spending upon uh, and giving the rights to those people. But excessive greed is forbidden. And that's what we have to stay away from. <coughs> In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he talked about the limitlessness of greed. The Prophet ﷺ said that if a man were to have a gold valley, a valley full of gold, then he would covet for another one. And if he had the second one, he would covet and yearn for a third one. And nothing but dirt and dust will fill the belly of the son of Adam. So there's no limit to, you know, fulfilling our greed. That's why Allah has not made this lowly world a place to fulfill our, our greed. It's a place to fulfill our need, but not our greed. The place where we should be really looking forward to and aspiring to and, and hoping for and having all of our... Uh, Desires fulfilled is the next world in Jannah, inshallah. <clears throat> so, greed is something that is forbidden in this aspect when it becomes excessive and doesn't let us fulfill the rights of people and, of course, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, it should not lead us to doing unlawful things. And it should make us always pay attention to all aspects of what we have just talked about. Now, when it comes to the kind of greeds, uh, in the book that we are studying right now, and this lecture is based upon that, Mufti Taqi Osmani Sahib, he mentioned here that there is kinds of greed. 
And so the first type of greed he mentions is one that makes a man tur turn towards unlawful means, like stealing, robbing, cheating, all of those things may Allah preserve us from them. <coughs> those are all basically uh, haram things to get into, and they are caused by this extreme kind of greed, and this is haram. This first type of greed is totally haram. <clears throat> the second kind of greed is one which does not directly involve him in unlawful earnings, but inside of him that person finds excuses and vague arguments uh, to collect wealth. So this kind is the most that is found in, unfortunately, uh, religious people even. Uh, Mufti Taqi Sahib, he mentions my father, Mufti Shafi Sahib, rahmatullahi <coughs> He used to say that the devil associated with the Molvi is also a Molvi. The devil associated with this person who is close to Allah <coughs> and has gained knowledge, his shaitan, his devil is also a Molvi. He knows how to trick the Molvi into thinking that he's doing something right, but he's really doing something wrong. So we should be very, very careful of that. You know, the Molvi, he, he'll never be prepared to steal or plunder, just like in the first category, right, or cheat. But, you know, the devil convinces him with arguments and excuses. He'll say, you have a right in this, you should take it. So he really doesn't have a right in it. But he'll find excuses and ways out to make that become lawful. <coughs> so he convinces himself to appropriate unlawful wealth to make it lawful. And this is also haram, the second type of greed. But when it comes to the greed that we have appreciated and, and praised, and that is agreed for the Akhirah. That's okay. So the third type of greed he talks about is found in one to whom wealth seems good and he wishes to accumulate it. But he does not do anything unlawful to earn it. He does not adopt improper measures to get wealth and does not try to find excuses and fake arguments for that. He keeps what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him through fair means and is happy with that, hoping to receive more. So this kind of greed is not blameworthy because it does not harm him in any way and nor does it make him do any wrong. And so with this we should understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to have hope and expectation and aspire towards good things and not towards bad things, not towards things that will keep us in a state of negligence. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum, wa la awladukum an zikrillah, wa man yafal dhalik, fa ulaika humul khasirun. Allah says, and I'll finish with this, where he says, in Surah Munafiqoon, O you who believe, don't let your monies, your wealth, and your children distract you from the remembrance of Allah. You know, in greed, it happens because we forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever does that, they will be among those people who are the losers. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next verses, he tells us that we should have concern of spending our monies in the right place and giving for the sake of Allah. And so this sickness of greed and the kinds of greed that we have just discussed and talked about, in certain aspects, the first two, which my teacher mentioned, are the ones that we should stay away from. And the last one, which is appreciated and appraised by Allah and His Rasul, is the one that we should be trying to practice upon 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all to the right path and give us tawfiq to practice upon the commands of the Quran and the Sunnah and guide us to Sirat al Mustaqim. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.